now really hi uh, to uh, Octoprintonia number 31. I'm still your host Gina Holske for the second time today because for some reason the stream didn't start when I told it to start. I'm pretty sure that I did tell it to start. And um, yeah, so uh, short outline of what I'm going to talk, uh, talk about today. Uh, the usual stuff actually, what I've been up to the past couple of weeks. Uh, what will be the next steps? Um, then we'll have a quick look at the stats from the anonymous usage tracking plugin. So uh, how many instances are out there? What plugins are they using? The usual usual uh, stuff that I always do here because sadly I still haven't managed to provide you all with uh, public access to that stuff uh, due to uh, yeah everything else going on. Um, and as always, uh, there is uh, a live chat for those of you watching this live on the right and uh, on, on, on the desktop and on mobile down there. And uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that uh, uh, in case during the Q&A section later, there will also be live questions. Um, so first of all, I, I'm feeling a bit weird right now having to repeat all of that again. And yeah, I was having such a nice flow also. and. <sighs> okay, well, what I've been up to. Um, probably everyone else here, uh, like, ev like probably everyone else here, I was monitoring the pandemic situation closely and trying to figure out how it affected me, what, um, yeah, what um, new past laws and such I had to follow. And also obviously worrying about stuff, um, also about the health of friends and relatives and things. And I will admit also a lot of shaking my head over people. Yeah, because there are still people out there who will, yeah, talk down to you for wearing a, a face mask in, in, in public, which is like, I mean, in, 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 in close quarter public, which is like, yeah. I think you might have missed the past couple of weeks, pal, and might to want to reinvestigate your obligations. But okay. Um, so uh, what else have I been up to? Pretty much, yeah, way less than I wanted to, I will say, because uh, I was drowning in requests, sadly. So uh, a lot more people than usual apparently are using their printers in these times of a con ongoing corona pandemic probably in order to print ppe and all that which is which is really good and which i uh which uh, is, is wonderful news uh, the only downside of that is uh, that i'm getting a ton more support requests and tickets and mails and uh, general pings on every available communication channel um, and uh, yeah, the, the past couple of weeks I've I, I made the mistake I now need to say to try to keep up with that and basically stayed in constant crunch mode. And uh, yeah, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I had to realize that I could not keep up and that it was actually affecting my health negatively. Like I was constantly having the one or other problem, back pain, uh, sniffles, um, you know the drill. And uh, yeah, so I... Last week or so, I decided I really need to dial back my hours again into something more in, in, in more sustainable regions and uh, try to make sure that I find some new way to handle all that that doesn't slowly, yeah, burn me to ashes. Um, long story short, uh, sorry in advance if and also uh, for for past for the past couple of weeks where uh, yeah it probably takes a bit longer. Uh, to get back to you on tickets and on forum posts and uh, and all that it's simply because yeah I only have 24 hours a day and um, at least eight of those I do need to sleep because I get really 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 cranky and also not very productive when I have less than eight hours of sleep add to that couple of hours for like private life and taking in food and all that and you you see the problem so um i was already running at peak resource usage before the pandemic hit and then yeah woof, that was the amount of to do's um the good thing here or I, I don't know if it's a good thing but at least what what is a bit of a relief is it's not just me <laughs> uh, apparently it's a general phenomena uh, phenomenon currently in uh, for open source developers and on open source project 
Uh, GitHub just put out an interesting study in that regard. So they analyzed uh, the, the activity patterns on all the public repositories, uh, or, or at least on some very large ones. I'm not entirely sure uh, uh, on, on, uh, about their uh, exact uh, data set. And um, it turns out that uh, there is a significant increase in uh, activity all over the place uh, in issues and all that. And I forgot to disable an alarm again. I always do that. And um, uh, yeah, significant reviews and issues and all that. And they also noticed that uh, a lot of maintainers are apparently showing burnout activity patterns with commit uh, density and um, hours worked per day and all that. Yeah, and I really, really do not want to fall into that pattern. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've uh, started to combat that and um, I'm working on getting back into a more regular, normal rhythm. Um, let me quickly just had to quickly take care of something. Um, yeah. Uh, what else have I been up to apart from getting swamped in <laughs> requests and trying to recover from that again? Uh, I've started, I, I think on actually uh, almost, yeah, ex yeah on, on, on April 1st. So it was not an April's Fools, but still on April 1st, I think I started doing regular live streams, um, live coding sessions, so public live streams where just for something like one or two hours, I um, stream, I share my screen with you, my IDE, you can see what I type, you can also see me, there's a live chat, I answer questions, I explain what I do, why I do it, and you can just see me fixing bugs or uh, implementing new features, uh, and also help me a bit with that. So there have been some cases where um, I got some nice uh, feedback from the live chat um, about, uh, yeah, some issues that I was trying to wrap my head around that then, yeah, together, like with this p pair programming kind of uh, perspective, basically, were peanuts to solve. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that. Uh, and at the beginning, I've been doing that twice per week. That was also part of where I had to realize, OK, that is too much. I cannot hold that hold that up like that. Um, on uh, and und, sorry, that was German. Um, and you can find it as Octoprint code and chat on the uh, Octoprint YouTube channel. Um, there's a playlist for all the episodes that so far aired. And there's also another playlist with three special episodes that I did where I developed a plugin from scratch. And you might be interested in that as well if you always wanted to see how to go about developing your own Octoprint plugin and what steps are involved and all that. And yes, you, you can just watch these three episodes and then you are way more uh, educated on that matter than before, probably. Um, yeah, so you might want to check that out. You also might want uh, to, and I cannot believe that I'm saying this, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell <laughs> so that you're notified when I do these live streams. So um, the current idea is, um, at least while this pandemic is ongoing, I'll try to, to continue to do them once per week. After things normalize a bit again and people uh, yeah, have less time be again and all that, I uh, plan to do it a bit yeah, less regularly. I'm not entirely sure yet if I will do it also something like this one, like monthly or, or, or if I do no regular pattern, but just when I feel like it or when I have to show something that is fun or educational or something, I, I, I'm not sure yet how I will do that. But what I'm pretty sure right now is that I will keep doing them because they have been a lot of fun for me. And apparently they have also been very, very received so far, at least based on the feedback that I got. So um, yeah, that is the current plan with those. Um, yeah, so what else have been up to? Um, uh, with regards to quo uh, code and all that, uh, yeah, I mostly did only maintenance for 141 so far because that was the only stuff that I could squeeze in between all these things hammering in on me. Um, and um, yeah, so, so yeah, so my bug fixes and, and, and some improvements on all that for 141, some PRs merged, things like that. Also, some of them done live in uh, uh, code and chat. 
Um, I also migrated some of my uh, plugins that I still maintain over to be Python 3 compatible. I put some more up for adoption uh, uh, slash mark them as abandoned because I do not find the time for them anymore. So um, you might want to take a look at the Octoprint organization on GitHub if you're a plugin developer and interested in taking some of them over. Maybe they've all been marked as, uh, uh, as I think I made them up for adoption or some tag like that. I'm not entirely sure right now uh, what the tag is called, but something like that. Yeah. Um, also, what I finally got around to do, because that was also something that fit in here and there, is uh, I started on automating some more stuff, some more build processes, testing and all that. For example, the page build builds for uh, octoprint.org and plugins.octoprint.org are no longer done by GitHub pages, but now by our own GitHub action that um, runs the page build. And that means we can now, yeah, use or even code our own plugins in order to um, add helpful information to the plugin pages, which has been requested a couple of times, things like when was the last commit on the repository to detect stale plugins and uh, maybe also something like uh, yeah, GitHub stars on them or stuff like that. So this is something that I still need to look into how best to uh, solve, but at least the technical groundwork has been done to even make it possible because before that, um, we could only use the stuff that was available for GitHub pages, and that is fairly limited and definitely not customizable enough for doing something like that. Um, and also a huge, huge thank you to a bunch of people who I from the community who I recruited into helping me triage tickets on the Octoprint Backtracker and also maintaining the um, Octoprint plugin repository. Uh, you know who you are and you've been a ton of help. I cannot say that and kind of stress that enough. Um, it's put such a huge load of my shoulders. I did not even notice how, how much that stuff was, yeah, weighing on me before. And, and, and now I don't have to worry about most of it anymore because you all just take care of it. And then if, um, uh, if something actually does need my attention, it's usually something that yeah, is, is, is more tricky or to solve or something like that. So that's really great. And I should have done this way more uh, soon, uh, way earlier. Uh, and yeah, I'll keep that in mind for uh, trying to delegate more tasks to uh, get more stuff off my plate. Um, uh, and one final thing that I've been up to, uh, which has actually been a development of only the past week and more specifically, actually in a, in a more or less public manner only for this week is uh, Octoprint now has an official Discord server. And if you're now sitting there and wondering what the heck is a Discord server, uh, it's like the hipster. Uh, no, it's not the hipster, but it's it's one of the most used chat platforms right now for for community building and all that. And you also get voice chats and all that. It comes from the gaming community mostly, I think, but uh, can also be very helpful for projects like Octoprint. And we now have one of these. Um, have a bunch of channels in there for getting support, for sharing what you've uh, been working on or with Octoprint uh, created uh, with or for Octoprint, that was the word that I was looking for. There's a special section just for Octoprint's patrons uh, and also a nifty little role that they get attached to their nick so that everyone knows that they are also, that, that they are the awesome people that they are. Um, and uh, yeah, I've uh, that, that thing, I created that server uh, last, Thursday, I think, and then we set up some uh, stuff in it. Uh, so the, the stuff that I quickly recruited for it and, and me. And then um, I opened it up for the patrons at first on Tuesday. Uh, and yesterday we opened it up to the public. So you can now get an invite for that at discord.octoprint.org. And uh, since yesterday, uh, our member numbers have now grown to over 2000. And yeah, it's a quite busy server now. And uh, yeah, I did really not expect it to grow that quickly. I did expect it to grow to huge numbers, but maybe not that quickly. Um, what I really, really enjoy seeing is that even though there is a whole ton of people on there now, they are 
all completely friendly and helpful and helping each other and yeah it feels really nice there it feels like quite wholesome wholesome place for me right now and, and it's really nice to see uh, you all helping each other there and um, I have the hope that long term or maybe even also short term uh, that server will also help to reduce the uh, number of support requests and just make people um, happy faster, so to speak. Um, and also maybe um, maybe long term also interested some more people into helping out with Octoprint's code base itself and uh, writing plugins and helping maintain things and all that. Um, because we also have a developer chat on there, or rather two actually, one for core Octoprint development and one for plugin developer development. So um, yeah, um, that's the idea. And the goal of that thing is certainly not to replace the existing community forum. Uh, that is still supposed to be, yeah, basically the knowledge hub for anything Octoprint. The FAQ will stay there, the guides will stay there, the wiki still needs to be fully migrated from GitHub to there. Uh, and um, yeah, it will also still be the point for the more tough or yeah, the trickier support requests because instant chat is nice if you have a quick question that you just need one single sentence answer to, or if you just need some hints or something, but as soon as yeah, lengthy log analysis is involved or uh, anything like comparing config files or something. Yeah, something like a forum soon starts to be way more suited. And I hope that people will uh, discover that and we won't suddenly have two support outlets there. Uh, I've already pointed the one or other pe uh, person over to the, uh, to the, to the forum. Um, yeah, and I just hope that the community all in all will also start doing that when they notice that things get out of hand for instant messaging. Yeah. So that is everything that happened the past weeks and now to the next steps. Um, yeah, the biggest uh, goal for me right now is actually to try to find a new rhythm that uh, is adapted to yeah the new uh, level of activity on this project. Um, and get back to regular hours and regular work. I have mostly tackled already the part with the regular hours. I'm still working on the regular work part, <laughs> um, but I get there. I'm positive. And um, yeah, then I also want to continue working on one for one because there's still a bunch of bugs, uh, bug reports waiting to be looked at there uh, that I simply did not find the time yet for. Um, and uh, yeah, I definitely need to look at them and ideally fix them before one for one hits. And um, there's also uh, the C report auto detection that has been pro broken pretty much from the start and which finally needs uh, a proper rewrite to make it work. Because yeah, while the brokenness has been present from the start, it um, really showed itself uh, with one for all due to some changes in there, which I've uh, provided a plug-in for to work around so that uh, yeah the brokenness no longer affects as many people but still um, yeah it needs to be changed and yeah it's time to do that yeah uh, and what I also want to do of course is um, as I mentioned uh, that I, I started working on some automation and I really need to carve out more time for that and finally tackle some of the things that have been just repetitive tasks that I need to do over and over and over again and just automate them and uh, yeah make them monitorable and all that. And yeah, that also, that's not only stuff like build processes and such, but that also involves things like um, yeah server maintenance basically. Um, because currently I, yeah, there are a bunch of servers that I run, uh, for, um, uh, uh sorry, I was distracted by the live chat. <laughs> um, I completely lost my train of thought. I'm good, right? All ah, right. Yeah. Servers like octoprint.org, the web server, for example, that also contains a bunch of redirects for quick FAQ links and all that, that are part built into octoprint itself. And um, uh, plugins.octoprint.org and and, and tracking.octoprint.org and all that and that stuff is all still manually maintained and that has to stop. It has just has to stop. I'm done with that. Um, 
yeah and i'm looking into this right now and also ideally how to how to um not only have it automated in some way but also um no, not 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 just something like automatic deployments of config changes and th something like that whenever I check something into GitHub, but actually, um, yeah, having some sort of monitoring pipeline for that as well and ma just making it overall easier to maintain and change things uh, without having to constantly SSH into some server somewhere and uh, navigate through a file system. Yeah, so it's time for that. And uh, as much as I love developing Octoprint and working on Octoprint, I've been doing all of this stuff manually for way too long. And yeah, that just needs to stop. Um, yeah, also what I really want to do is stay healthy. And uh, yeah, that is also why I need to find this new rhythm again. Yeah. Um, also, one thing that I just remembered that I <laughs> that I said in the earlier revision of this, where I forgot to put YouTube on live, or or where YouTube ignored my click on go live, I don't know, uh, is um, I'm still undecided on uh, whether I, I mean obviously the next steps will also involve getting back to work on what is going to be one five one, but what I'm still undecided on is whether one five one will be one five uh, one five sorry 150 or 2.0 maybe uh, because the thing is that considering the timeline that we are working on so python 2 has been end of life now since january 1st we now have may 8th um octoprint 140 with python 3 support was released in march early march march 4th i think um and uh, back then i said that, that uh, python 2 support would be dropped from octoprint uh, after something like a year. So chances are high that whatever will be the next major release will be will will also be the one where drop Python 2 support, which means backwards incompatibility because obviously a plugin that runs on Python 140 cannot uh, on on uh, no the other way around. Something that runs on Python uh, that requires Python 3 cannot necessarily run on Python 140. Uh, on oh, on Octoprint 140, I get confused here. Um, and it would also allow me to drop some workarounds to use some stuff for the next big release that I currently can't due to backwards compatibility issues. And uh, considering that I've wanted to include the new com layer ASAP into the code base anyhow, it might be interesting to just yeah call the next non 1.4 maintenance release simply 2.0 and completely forego backwards compatibility, which we can do then because major number, um, so you have with a version number, you have major minor patch. In Octoprint, we currently are at 1.4.0. So one is major, four is minor, O is patch. And when you drop backwards compatibility in any way, you have to increase the major version according to semantic versioning rules. And if I have to do that anyhow, I can go all in <laughs> and also make it make my life way easier with regards to the new com layer because yeah a heavy heavy percentage of what i've had to work on on this on this thing whenever i actually found a time to work on it uh, over the past year was uh, maintaining backwards compatibility in one way or another and if i can just say oh well <clears throat> don't care that makes things way easier and development way 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 easier too and yeah so that is something I'm thinking about. I haven't yet fully decided on it yet, but it's something that I'm thinking about. All right. So that brings us to the point where I talk uh, or give you a quick look at the stats. stats. So I'm going to switch you to the other screen. And that was supposed to be the one where I'm still in there. Oh, all right. Let's leave me out of there for now, because actually then you can see more. Um, so uh, this is the stats from the past seven days. I cannot load this dashboard in anything that is uh, that is a longer time frame because then it just gets slow, horribly slow due to all the data that is currently being gathered in there. It's, but I, yeah, I can no longer buy a bigger server tier there which are without uh, starting to cluster. So that's what we currently have to deal with here. Uh, so over the past seven days, we saw 66,000 or almost 60, 67,000 instances worldwide who had opted into the anonymous usage tracking. 
109 years of accumulated printed time. The biggest percentage of uh, deployed versions is 140. And um, 1312 is a second at 9, at 9k. And there are still a bunch of older versions out there. Um, and uh, yeah, there's not much not much new to see here. I already mentioned that uh, the printing hours have increased significantly ever since the pandemic started in the last stream. Uh, what is interesting here still is the Python versions reported on startup. So out there, there are there have been over the past 60 days, been almost a thousand instances of Octoprint now running under, um, under Python 3 and uh, 98,000 running under Python 2. That number here is a number that I only realized yesterday because so far it always had been something like 60,000 instances the past 30 days or so. And now we are looking at, yeah, close to 100,000 instances over 60 days. That is a bit insane. And considering that is only the instances that have opted into anonymous usage tracking, which I think is only a small percentage based on some under other numbers that I got. Um, just a quick info on that. When 140 was rolled out, pywheels.org suddenly saw a huge increase in a bunch of packages that, Py, that Octoprint uses. And it was a huge mystery for, their, for them and they put out a blog post on that and somehow that blog post and or rather the tweet accompanying it uh, landed in my lap. And at first I was like, no, that cannot be Octoprint. But then we talked a bit more about stats and uh, about some, yeah, some, some background info that they gave me and all that. And then I realized, okay, that apparently was Octoprint. But at that point that they had seen these measurements, they indicated a number of active instances, roughly 10 times as high as the stuff that I measure here, which means, well, if there are 10 times more Octoprint instances than are uh, then, or, or rather if only 10% of all Octoprint instances actually have anonymous usage, uh, usage tracking enabled, that means I'm currently looking at roughly a million instances out there. And that is a bit of a sobering thought. And actually I find it a bit scary because all I wanted was to put my printer in my spare bathroom and now there are a million in uh, maybe a mil I don't know it, but definitely more than 100,000. And that's already a high number uh, instances out there running set software. That is, yeah, well, I did not expect that. Anyhow, to continue with the stats, uh, a quick look at the print jobs. And this is also over the past 60 days because it still shows you this ramp up uh, nicely um, that happened and uh, uh, yet yeah, with the with the with the explosion of the pandemic so to speak the number of print jobs also exploded um, what's interesting here is the significantly higher spikes of cancelled prints um, that is different from what I used to see there um, and they always come in these clusters and I think those corresponded to some new uh, face shield releases, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, still, I, yeah, it seems to be regular cancels and nothing else. Uh, yeah, and here it's, it's pretty much the same picture that we just had. Most of them are under 140, some still in 1312, and then some, some older versions here and there as well. And most people print around these hours. These are UTC times, I think, by the way. So regardless of where you are in the world, apparently most of you print in my afternoon, which I find kind of funny. If you wonder what this is, uh, this is the switch to um, summertime. And uh, which means this cannot be UTC, right? I have no idea right now, but yeah. Um, Nothing that interesting down here. Only maybe the most mo the most common issues that lead to error reported firmware errors are uh, thermal runaways <laughs> and min temp errors. So yeah, you all need to check your thermistors. Uh, also, if you're wondering about this here, 
uh, this little thing and we also saw something like that here this breakdown here i had a uh, server outage a tracking server outage here because something was wrong in the um in the data center where the virtual the, the virtual server that the tracking is running on is located and that happened at so that must be utc numbers because i remember seeing that on may 4th at uh, midnight precisely more or less uh, and it was down there for a while and that is why the stats are a bit off there but just so you know um and uh, now the thing that i know at least one plugin author in the channel has been, in the chat has been waiting for the top 20 plugins and congratulations jim you bet bread <laughs> in the past 30 days <laughs> with your bad level visualizer it has now surpassed octolabs but that one Octolabs is still uh, closely on your heels. So yeah, this is going to be fun to watch, I think. Um, yeah, and I, as I said, I'm still looking into how some are making these stats public. I'm currently looking into maybe, um, yeah, building some kind of extraction automation that takes this kind of data and um, makes it available to the page build so that uh, every 12 hours or so we can update the the information on plugins.octoprint.org uh, with the number of installations out there, which I hope will uh, also be a, a neat little indicator for everyone, uh, whether a plugin is popular or not. Okay, um, so that was that. Uh, the quick look at the stats and now we quickly switch over here to the um, ha. to the Q and A. Um, uh, first question was by Mark. Uh, what hardware do you run Octoprint on at home? Yeah, well, that depends really. Uh, I uh, have have two types of hardware I run it on. Uh, the one thing is the development platform that I use for Octoprint, which is my workstation here and the other one is a runtime environment so the stuff that i actually deploy it on in order to drive my printers um and for yeah my development machine is a, a ryzen 7 uh 1800x with a geforce gtx 970 and 32 gigabytes of ram and uh, windows 10 pro and this is the part where everyone always goes <gasps> yeah sorry i develop on the windows which is because uh, which is uh due to this machine also being my primary gaming machine um, so it is mostly tailored uh, to work, but I also game on that. And I really hate having to constantly reboot. So I simply learned to develop under Windows. And honestly, if you install a, a bash and um, uh, a con emu, uh, then it just more or less feels like uh, the real deal anyhow. And you don't lack any kind of tools. And now with uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, things are even nicer. So I can have both worlds without having to reboot in order to play a game. Um, and development happens, uh, which is something those of you who have watched Octoprint Code on chat uh, episodes already know, happens with uh, JetBrains PyCharm Pro. That's my ID of choice. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't even take, um, I don't even use their open source special licensing thing because I also occasionally do paid for work with this IDE. Um, I just really swear by their products and they are polished. They are good tools uh, for a developer uh, to use. And yeah, that's not any kind of advertisement here. I just want to explain my choice. Um, yeah, and with regards to runtime environments, I think most of the printers here are st I think one is still have still has a Pi two, but I I'm actually going to decommission that uh, soon. And the others have Python three and three plus. Uh, Py oh, are Pi's three and three plus? I'm getting so confused these days. Uh, apologies. Um, with the latest Octopi, and uh, um, I actually pref uh, prefer uh, USB webcams. So I I use I use Logitech to uh, see to. 270 because I simply found them to be reliable, cheap, well, currently not, but mostly. And um, they just work. And yeah, so that's why I use them. Um, next question. How do you stay focused on a single project like Octoprint for so long? 
Aren't you tempted at times to leave Octoprint behind and do something else? Um, I think the biggest secret to this is actually that I love working on it. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the tasks are also so diverse that it's really tricky to get bored or, or yeah, having the whole project feel boring or so, because yeah, whenever there's one part where I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to do printer communication this week, then I simply look into something on the front end, for example. So I have this huge technology, technology stack. I can do front end development. I can do back end development. I can do DevOps as I'm, uh, as I'm demonstrating right now with my automation um, crusade. I can uh, do community management. Well, I have to do community management too. Um, so there's a ton of, of stuff that I can and must do all the time that it just never gets boring. And I think that is a huge fra factor. Um, and I, when, when, I, when I really just need a break from everything, uh, then, yeah, then there's always my pet projects. So I do some electronics tinkering. Um, I uh, do play around with new toys here and there. And let me quickly just switch back to the webcam because new toys like this one, which is uh, the Mr. Ream Dreamcut laser cutter that I just recently got to play around with. So this is also stuff that keeps me happy. By the way, that thing, so, thing runs Octoprint in a heavy customized version. And uh, not customized version, actually stock Octoprint, but uh, customized uh, plug-in. Really, really awesome stuff. Really happy how uh, what they did there. Have been following the development of the Mr. Beam ever since 2014 or so, when the company got founded, and it's it's just awesome. Yeah, but back to me. Um, currently, I'm also sewing a lot, <laughs> face masks for myself and uh, and my loved ones, basically. And uh, I. Uh, you might also have noticed that I occasionally wear on these streams. I occasionally wear a home assistant T-shirt, which is, yeah, the home my home automation uh, tool of choice. Um, and I also play around a lot with that, so that keeps me happy and um, gives me the the uh, distraction or the, the 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 change in 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 wallpaper or something that I need. Also, I don't get bored easily, so that also helps, I think. Um, there are actually only two things I think that could make me leave Octoprint. Um, one is burnout, actual burnout from the project, or rather from, yeah, maybe the 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 the, um, the people aspect of the project. So. I have I have an awesome community. I have an awesome bun an awesome bunch of patrons. Um, the thing is, there are some not so awesome people out there, which can really ruin your mood. And if the amount of these people uh, gets too much, it can, yeah, the the kind of abuse that you get from that direction then can really ruin your day. And if this happens too much, that is something where I would at one point just say, you know what, I'm no longer doing this to myself. But so far that has not happened. And um, I also have to say that owning a punching bag in my office, which um, I cannot really show you right now, I think. I can try. Maybe a bit back there. So having that thing in my office, plus setting strong boundaries, like also publicly when someone oversteps uh let's say the the bound the bounds of decency and of uh, of friendliness then i just draw a line in the sand and say okay this far not further and also just yeah if it gets too much this is also the point where i would start banning people and and or seek help from mods and all that um because it's always easier to know that someone has your back in that regard and having to fight these kinds of fights yourself um, at some point at least. But yeah, so that ha certainly helps here. And uh, yeah, the other thing where I could imagine leaving the project or yeah, dropping the project was when it simply was no longer financially viable for me. So right now I can do this because I'm able to do it full time. It's not definitely f way, way past a level where it could be done as a pet project. So I have to do that full time or not at all. 
And um, the only reason why I can do it full time is because of people supporting my work on Patreon, on PayPal, on GitHub sponsors, uh, on DonorBox. So all this financial support that allows me to do that instead of a regular normal job, uh, that is uh, what is yeah, basically making the gears and keeping the gears on turning. And if that suddenly dried up or just yeah, interest fizzled over time and, and things would go sideways uh, financially, then I would just have to say, okay, that's it. But as far as, as, as long as that doesn't happen or, or nothing unforeseen happens, uh, yeah, I think I'm in here for the long haul because yeah, it's still fun. And that is the most important thing actually. Okay. Um, Next question by, by John. Uh, I saw something pass by on Twitter quickly the other day about you having a new sponsor. Can you elaborate on those news a bit? Uh, I have to say there's not much to elaborate on. <laughs> um, uh, the thing is, so the new sponsor is Race3D. You might know them from their uh, Race Cloud offering or from their Race uh, 3D lineup of printers. And um, they recently published this new plugin that allows you to, uh, this new Octoprinter plugin, I should add, that allows every Octoprint instance to connect uh, with their cloud. And yeah, because they are apparently very awesome people, also from my interaction with them, they also directly jumped on board as a sponsor at the same time. And that is really, really awesome news. And I'm really, really grateful to them. Um, Especially also since uh, thanks to this decision by on, on their the, their end, I finally managed to catch up um, or, or to patch up the hole that yeah the leaving of Lulzbot back in November left uh, in in the in the funding, and that's really really good news and that really was a huge relief for me I have to say so yeah huge thanks to Race 3D here, um, and that's pretty much all I can say to that right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and another question from John, uh, having had to work from home for an extended period of time recently, like a lot of people, I think, well, I'm pretty sure you're right there. Uh, I have a new ap appreciation for the challenges this can pose when coding, especially with cats of food. Do you miss having a dedicated office space? Not the boss and colleagues and internal politics of it all, but just that I'm working outside of home factor. Well, I have to say not really. Um, my home office pretty much feels like a dedicated uh, office space, I have to say. Uh, so much so actually that I got myself an Nvidia Shield and a lab board, so a combined keyboard and mouse pad thingy, uh, to be able to game remotely on my TV from the couch uh, because it just felt wrong to stay in my work environment after work. So I have this urge when I drop the hammer for the day to leave this room which, as I mentioned before, is a bit bad if I want to play some PC game because my working rig is also my gaming rig. So yeah, thankfully there are solutions for that. Um, and yeah, I have everything that I need here. I have uh, all my, I have my printers, I have my standing desk, I have three monitors and uh, also now a fancy new lighting set setup for the streams and all that microphone stuff. Um, and uh, laser cutter, a great new shelving unit that I installed here, which finally cleaned up a huge mess that I had in the whole printer area and finally some organization for my filament and all that. Long story short, I really feel happy in here. And um, yeah, when I don't want to be reminded of work, I simply close the door. Uh, a huge trick with regards to that, that is by, by the way, also to disable all notifications that are work related on your private phone. And I only have a private phone, so yeah. <laughs> um, what I actually do miss is um, or are the social interactions. So yeah, usually back when I still had a normal job, uh, actually let me quickly so you can see me. Um, when st Back when I still had a normal job, what I really enjoyed was the daily chit chat. You know, like you met up in the tea kitchen and you quickly just exchange some words or you had a problem and you brainstormed over it with uh, one of your colleagues quickly stuff like this 
and um yeah that just that that is something that i really miss but i've been able to mostly uh, replace this with online chats so in the beginning it was irc then it was uh, some friends on telegram that i just keep in touch with over the day and i hope maybe now it will become discord or also discord uh and yeah, so these kinds of interactions just really help to fill that particular void. And what I definitely do not miss are the internal politics, though sometimes really drove me bloody insane. I remember days driving home from work. Also, by the way, one to five hours or two hours of commute per day. Nah, -uh. never again if I can avoid it. But I remember days when I drove from home from work and was just angry because of the stupid decision someone two or three levels above me at work had done yeah contrary to all better judgment and all technical um factors simply due to some politic games uh, within the department and that was just uh. so i'm really not missing that um i have occasionally thought about joining a co-working space when the loneliness in the home office got a bit too much but yeah, so far I always decided against it because, I mean, this has so many advantages. I already mentioned all the equipment that I have, but there's also the added point of, I can just pull up the volume here and listen to my music at top volume if I want and sing along and do not annoy anyone with that. And yeah, there, there is no interruptions, usually at least. Sometimes the postman rings the bell and sometimes Basically, every package delivery company in, in, in Germany has a package to drop off uh, at some neighbor here. And they, they all by now have figured out that I'm at home all the time. And then they ring here and I have to collect packages. So this sometimes around, around midday usually um, can become a bit annoying and disruptive. But usually no disruption. Uh, also because no notifications and all that. Very important uh, tip, by the way. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just have everything here that I need usually. And that is, I really enjoy it. I, I'm not sure actually if I'm still able to work in a regular normal office environment uh, five days per week, nine to five every day. I think I would really, yeah, be sad if I had to do that again, <laughs> because this just works for me. But I mean, I'm a single child. <laughs> I uh, I learned to to be uh, alone most of my day uh, pretty early on, and um, I've also been doing this already this mode of work here for six years. So um, that definitely adds to that, I guess. Yeah. And that was this question. And now I'm quickly going to throw a peek into the live chat if there is something that resembles a question. So far, all I can see is talking about gaming and Windows versus Linux. I'm not going to go on that soapbox. No, no. So, uh, yeah, I guess that means we can wrap this up here. And I'm quite happy that I managed to make it through without any more technical difficulties, apparently. Yeah, sorry for the bumpy start. Uh, I'm going to edit that out for the recording, <laughs> mostly at least. Um, and uh, next time I will hopefully remember to click the go live button or I'll just set it up again so that it uh, automatically starts the stream because I just found that YouTube apparently allows that. So maybe I should do it to not run into problems like this again. I'll investigate that, but yeah. Um, so, ah, one question by NC Bob. What is the status of updating display layer progress plugin? Do you know? Uh, what I know is that Oli put out a development version, which apparently fixes the issue observed with that uh, for some people. I've also been monitoring the ticket in question. And uh, what I can tell you from my perspective is that whatever is causing these layer shifting issues when this plugin is enabled cannot just be that plugin because the only thing that this plugin seems to cause is um or rather the 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 current or some older versions or i i'm not entirely sure on the version numbering here but the only thing that a plugin and octoprint itself actually can cause with regards to talking to the printer here is um 
that data is not sent fast enough to the printer for it to keep the job up. So that could lead to stuttering. Stuttering I can completely see. These layer shifting issues that some of you are seeing, I haven't seen it yet, by the way, and I also ran this plugin for a while, um, is, yeah, is something that reeks of a firmware bug. Um, someone on the ticket suggested that maybe it might be um, related to Linear Advance, and this is an interesting idea because I remember Linear Advance also caused a bunch of problems back when it was introduced in early versions of the Prusa firmware. Um, and this is certainly something that people should uh, figure out who can reliably reproduce the issue if disabling Linear Advance will then make the issue disappear. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way that, that the printer communication and the firmware works is uh, you send it a command and the firmware interprets the command. And if it's a movement command, it puts it into the so-called planner buffer. Uh, and when it has a certain number of planned moves planned, then it can also um, figure out uh, how it needs to calculate acceleration and jerk and all that. And um, if you don't feed it fa data fast enough, then it will stutter. What I don't see here is how not getting data fast enough can cause a layer shift, or rather a shift in X or Y direction of the printhead. That should never be able to happen. Um, the only thing that I could imagine, maybe the stepper routines are not being pulsed correctly or something like this, causing the stepper to not be driven correctly, causing a shift. Um, and the other thing are mangled coordinates. Uh, but for that, the shifts aren't big enough. So I had a similar issue a while with uh, the BQ Hephaestus 2 firmware, the original one, when I added a heated their heat, heated bed add-on to that. And um, they did some floating point division calculation, uh, floating point calculations inside an interrupt in that firmware build when a heated bed was attached for temperature monitoring, I think for the bed. And that caused the serial connect uh, communication to go completely haywire. Like um, I got one, one recent request after the next and sometimes the printhead would just move to the edge of the bed and return. And that is also, I think, where layer shifts could in get introduced. So this is why I'm saying maybe it's a, re a, a, a thing that actually does relate to some computational, computational overhead on the firmware side. But what definitely is happening um, is that something in the firmware is, is, is wrong as well. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's just an overstressed processor or what it is, but this is not just caused by the host side, whether it be the plugin or Octoprint itself. This is something where the firmware also is involved in some way or, the, or another. And the, the, the tricky part for, for everyone now is to try to figure out what is happening here and solving it. Um, and to just quickly answer the question by Christian, uh, what are these shifts in the XY plane or in the Z axis as far as I know in the XY plane? Um, I have not seen it myself personally. I just got a bunch of reports and uh, uh, usually with the DLP plugin, so the, the um, display layer progress plugin involved, and this is when I put out the notification that's some people are experiencing layer shifts with that. So careful if you do, then please look into this ticket. Um, so yeah, this is a weird issue and something where I think people really also do not only need to look at the host side, but also at the firmware side, because something is fishy here. Um, host software should not be able to cause a layer shift. Let me, let me say it that way, unless the coordinates it sends out are mangled, are changed. So if I send the printer uh, the command to go to X10, Y10, and if I then send the printer the command to go to X11, Y10, then I expect the printer to do exactly that. And if for some reason, after I tell it to go to X11, Y10, it suddenly goes to X11, Y9, then something is going wrong on the firmware side or on the communication between the two. Um, in any case, it's something that also needs to be investigated. We cannot just point our fingers at the DLP plugin and go, Ugh. yeah, but there is something else here happening. Of course, things need to be changed so that data is um, spooled to the printer fast enough, but Oli already works on that. And I, as far as I understand, has it covered more or less? Um, it's also something that on my end, I'm also looking into. That's the whole reason also for doing this whole new com layer in order to 
be able in the future to work around the slowdowns or the, the, the limitations that the current one has regarding uh, uh, um, approachable speeds. And it's also something that Brad is currently working on, or aka former lurker of Octolab's fame with his new ArcWelder plugin that he's working on, uh, where he's looking into replacing uh, a, a whole ton of linear um, line segments that rebuild a curve into actual G2 or G3 curve commands, um, which sadly by now have been thrown out of a lot of firmware out there, but which are part of the standard and um, yeah, which can help a ton here with the uh, serial transmission situation. But yeah, okay, I'm I'm digressing. Um, Jim just said maybe uh, maybe it could be something like flipping between relative and absolute extrusion with firmware for some reason. I have no idea. Or maybe that was a, about the previous thing I have no idea um, anyhow uh, my stomach is starting to rumble and I've been now at it for over an hour because I had to redo the first 25 four minutes um, so I'm just quickly going to take care of some dinner stuff give me a second and then I'm going to wrap this up so um, yeah uh, the next regular Octoprint on Air will probably be somewhere around the start of June. Uh, it always depends a bit on, on, on my own schedule. Uh, I now try to do these on Friday uh, afternoon evenings my time. So because apparently most of you have time around there then and it's way better than when I back back in the day when I still did them on Sunday mornings at seven o'clock. Not going to happen anymore. I'm sorry that really did a whole number on my uh, on my on my sleep schedule every time I did it. Um, I will post the appointment on Patreon as always, and um, yeah, so just keep an eye out and also remember to <laughs> like, subscribe, and hit the bell uh, because I'm also going to uh, do at least yeah, I hope at least one. <laughs> Definitely at least one, uh, probably more like three or four uh, code and chats in the meantime. Uh, so um, yeah, that was it from my side for now. Um, I hope it was uh, interesting. Thank you all for being here and watching this live or later the recording maybe. Um, and uh, until next time, all that's left to say is stay healthy, wear a mask and uh, happy printing. Bye.